The Mighty Saxon are back with their new album, Hellfire and Damnation. Great. So let's take a look at what is inside Saxon's 24th studio record, point out some strange facts about it, and then hopefully answer the questions whether Hellfire and Damnation still sounds like that classic Saxon, and whether it is even still relevant today. Here you go. The album opens with a classic Saxon intro, The Prophecy, a spoken word part for which was recorded by the actor Brian Blast, whose voice instantly erases memories from the simpler times. You! Luxley. God and King Richard! Yeah! And here's the thing, this old school intro is actually very indicative of the feelings Hellfire and Damnation evokes as a whole. It is somewhat of a statement that Saxon are here not to reinvent the wheel, but to give the best possible version of this classic heavy metal sound reimagined in 2023. Light versus dark. Is this a myth or is it true? And of course, what it also does perfectly is setting up the mood for the record's title track, exploded in energy right with the opening riff, written by the band's newcomer, Brian Tetler. <laughs> Overall, Hellfire and Damnation, which was rightfully released as the first single to the album, is a classic, upbeat Saxon opener done in the vein of Thunderbolt or Carpe Diem, which is pretty much exactly what Big Bifer told us a year ago it would be. And yet, there is something different about it. And this difference is notable not only on Hellfire and Damnation. A touch of a guitarist whose work has influenced generations of musicians, including Metallica and the entire Big Four of thrash metal. Diamond Heads, Brian Tatler. <laughs> Here I have to point out that I absolutely love Paul Quinn and everything he has done throughout his career. I consider Paul to be one of those quintessential new wave of British heavy metal guitarists whose input on the genre simply cannot be overestimated. But at the same time, for me personally, it was always Brian Tetler, whom I consider to be one of the most influential guitarists ever, a riff lord mastermind who always kind of stayed in the shades and so I'm very and very happy that today, in 2023, Brian Adler joined forces with his old friends from Saxon and is stepping into the spotlight of this new wave of British heavy metal sound revival. But going back to Hellfire and Damnation, just as it usually is with the Saxon album, its title track is actually possibly the most indicative of the record's sound overall. Combining this old school new wave of British heavy metal sound with the modern tendencies, being both heavy and melodic at the same time. And just as if to contrast that, Madame Guillotine is actually going full back to the 80s, cranking its old school vibe to 11. These go to 11. This is one of those songs which would fit really well on any of the classic Saxon albums, with a melodic chorus simply made to be sang along with the crowd. Despite its simplicity, the song is infectious and toe tapping, yet its cherry on top is actually the very touchy guitar solo, done in a very manner of the classic mid tempo heavy metal pieces, which almost mesmerizes you, despite the song actually talking about rather dark part of the human history. Wait, dude! Uncool. Chop, 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 chop. Yet, if that steady beat has put you in a trance, worry not, for you will be quickly woken up by possibly the heaviest and definitely the highest paced track on the record. An ode to the birth of the new wave of British heavy metal itself, Fire and Steel. Nice! Fire and Steel taps back to the realms of early speed metal, with its skull crushing riffs and a head banging call and response chorus. To me, it is one of the strongest songs on the record and to be honest with you, I am actually kind of clueless as per why didn't Saxon release it as a second single for the album, instead going with a much softer mid-tempo piece. There is something in Roswell, which came out just three days before the album's release, combines the two favorite passions of every metalhead. Heavy metal music 
and Kirky Alien conspiracy theories. Have you seen the new Saxon video? Uh, no, what's it called? There's something in Roswell. My dad told me about that crash. I love Saxon. The track, of course, talks about the events surrounding the 1947 crash of an army weather balloon in Roswell, New Mexico. Or was it an army weather balloon that crashed in Roswell that day? Well, who knows, but it definitely makes a great story. And together with this Dallas 1PM era classic Saxon sound, makes you paint the vivid images in your head while headbanging to a very, very, Catch you too. There's something in Roswell. We don't believe the lies. But I have to be honest with you, when I first heard that song around a month ago, I actually thought that despite it being a very, very strong one, it would be one of those tracks that would be best enjoyed among the other songs on the album. And so I was actually rather surprised that Saxon decided to release it as a single instead of, let's say, Fire and Steel or 1066, of which we'll talk in a moment. But it looks like the song was received quite well by the fans even without hearing the rest of Hell, Fire and Damnation. Which I guess just once again proves that after rocking the world for almost 50 years, Biff Byford and the boys kinda know quite well what they're doing. Thus ends the first half of the record, and thus it would be a good time to draw the first conclusions about Hell, Fire and Damnation. So let's do it. Around a year ago, Biff Byford told us that the next album, which came out to be Hell, Fire and Damnation, would be done in a vein of Thunderbolt and Carpe Diem, a natural continuation of the two, if you will, and he definitely kept his promise. On Hellfire and Domination, Saxon indeed do not try to reinvent the wheel or completely change the rulebook of heavy metal, which they actually co-wrote together with some other bands back in the late 70s, early 80s. Yes, that's true. And yet there is something vastly different in Hellfire and Domination even compared to its predecessor. Despite it having a very classic sound, Hellfire and Domination is actually not your paint by numbers heavy metal album. And what strikes me the most is how diverse it actually is from a song to a song. Oh, and by the way, guys, since we're having a little break here, I just wanted to point out that only around 30% of the people who are watching my videos are actually subscribed to the Metal Pilgrim channel. So if by any chance you still haven't done so yet, and especially if this is not the first video you're watching on this channel, I would really, really appreciate it if you would consider doing it right now. Let's continue building this amazing heavy metal community together. We're gonna have a good time. Always. But anyways, the break is over. Let's continue. The second part of Hellfire and Damnation opens with Kublai Khan and the Merchant of Venice, on which Biff Byford allows himself once again to explore the nerdier side of himself, telling the tale of the meeting between the Chinese Emperor Kublai Khan and Mr. Polo of Venice, which has happened roughly 700 years ago. Yeah, I'm a nerd myself. Nerd. Nerd. But if you would have thought that given their age on the second half of the album, Saxon would slow down a notch or possibly even strategically place some weaker written songs on it, you are actually up for a big surprise, as the second half of the album actually features some of the best gems of Hell, Fire and Damnation. And Kublai Khan and the Merchant of Venice with its exquisite guitar solo is definitely one of them. Nice. And the same of course goes for the next track, Pirates of the Airwaves, which explores the impact of pirate radio stations on the 1960s UK rock and roll landscape, which in its due course actually gave birth to our favorite genre. And by the way, just last week, Biff Byford actually joined me on the show for an interview about Hellfire and Damnation, and among other things, we actually had a rather in-depth chat about this particular song and its meaning, so if you still haven't seen it, I would really recommend you do it right after watching this episode. These DJs that, that were on these places were absolutely megastars. Yeah. They were rock stars of their day, you know. This is exactly the same thing just 20 years earlier. <laughs> That's right, exactly, exactly the same thing. If the young people want it, somebody will give it to them. 
Yeah. That's how it works, yeah, and it still works the same today. On 1066, for the first time on this record, Saxon explore a much darker side of their sound. Written by Brian Tedler, which you can actually immediately hear in the riffage, 1066 is in a way a twin sister of the track Saxon released together with Mourn Amorth just last year. And yet, despite it not having any growling vocals, it is actually much more gloomy, dark, and reflective than its older sister. There is no truth inside. And thus we come to the final chapters of Hell, Fire and Damnation. Witches of Salem is a track which allows the drummer Nigel Glockler to shine in his full glory. His excellent drumming with the thoughtfully placed double bass patterns and clever tempo changes keep a listener on his tones throughout the entire track, creating a haunting atmosphere as Biff unfolds a theme of a witch hunt paranoia. And by the way, I would absolutely love to actually hear the band Burning Witches cover this track, and not only because of the song's title, but because first of all, I know that the girls are actually huge Saxon fans, and secondly, it would actually fit rather well with the sound the girls produced in the last couple of years. And of course, what it also does quite well is create a mood for the album's closer, Supercharger, which even though I cannot really say that it is my favorite track of Hellfire and Domination, perfectly captures the entire essence and small bits of each of the tracks presented on this record. In my opinion, making it a perfect closer for this album, allowing it to end on a very high note. So is this album worth your attention? Absolutely yes. Hellfire and Damnation is an ode to the new way for British heavy metal of a band which is not in any way stuck in the past, but is rather very respective of its legacy and it's willing to take the classic sound and reimagine it in 2024. In addition to everything, it is rather diverse, yet at the same time very coherent, with every track of it paying dues to this classic heavy metal sound, yet at the same time not being pained by numbers heavy metal. And while it is no secret that I really, really liked Carpe Diem, in my opinion Hellfire and Damnation actually freshens up the band's sound, while every track on it still remaining undeniably true to the Saxon legacy. And in addition to everything, of course, every tune on this album is pretty much written to be played live. And given the fact that the band is actually going on a tour together with Judas Priest and Uriah Heep, I simply cannot wait to hear how some of those songs would sound like with thousands of heavy metal fans singing along together with the band. So if for some reason you are still contemplating whether to see that tour or not, I honestly, and possibly this is because I am a Ukrainian in Ukraine right now and I just hope to see pretty much any of my favorite bands live. But still, I honestly have no idea what you're thinking about. Just do it. And I truly hope that that amazing lineup will actually make it to Ukraine this year as well. But anyways, what do you guys personally think about Hellfire and Damnation? Please let us know in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching this video and we will prevail. Slava Ukraini!